When people talk about the Minnesota music scene, you know, they usually mention the Minneapolis sound, and most people do associate that with Prince. But there were others around that same time who helped put that iconic sound on the map. One of them is Jelly Bean Johnson. Here's Amy Hockard. You might think playing a nearly empty club during a pandemic would be disheartening. But Jelly Bean Johnson lives for nights like this. You know, music is my, my whole being. You know, if I couldn't do music, I probably wouldn't exist. Top hat and towering stature aside, Jelly Bean Johnson is one of the most unassuming music legends in Minnesota history and a pioneer of the Minneapolis sound. I mean, I've heard him play some blues that, that you want to walk up to somebody and just slap them and hug them at the same time. That's how good he is. He's that good. That's Jelly Bean Johnson. Few people know the Minneapolis sound better than Walter Q. Bear Banks. He's been playing it at KMLJ Radio for 43 years. Prince is, is probably the, the, the most notable person, you know, globally out of everybody and everything. But talent wise, this cat was so amazing. It's just crazy how much talent he had and you know, all the different instruments that he could play. Gary Jellybean Johnson grew up in Chicago. At 13, his mom moved the family to North Minneapolis for a better life. To keep Gary out of trouble, she bought him his first real drum kit. He learned to play by listening to the radio. When I moved here, uh, black radio was only on for like four hours, from like 1 o'clock in the afternoon to 5 o'clock in the afternoon. It forced me to listen to a lot of white rock stations, and that's how I got into Three Dog Night and Black Sabbath and Rare Earth and all those kind of people and stuff. And that changed me too musically. As a teenager, Gary found friends in the neighborhood with a similar passion for music. We now know them as Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, Morris Day, and Prince. We would have this huge uh, festival in the summertime, and all the, all the rival bands and, and neighboring bands would come and play in front of thousands of people out in the park in North Cummins Park over here and stuff. And stuff. So we cut, we, cut, we cut our teeth doing that as you know, youngers, youngsters. Once Prince signed his first record deal at 18, he brought some of his North Side friends along. Prince created The Time, made Jelly Bean the drummer, and put them on the map in Purple Rain. Prince told, told Morris, you go back get Jelly Bean, and we'll do the band. So you're going to sing. And Morris like, I don't want to sing. I want to just, <laughs> I don't want to sing. I want to play the drums. You're like, well, no, I'll teach you. It was the 80s, and the Minneapolis sound was reinventing pop music. But behind the scenes, Prince's bands, including The Time, were falling apart. Eventually, Jelly Bean turned to producing. He went to work for Flight Time Records and his old friends, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, who at the time were working with Janet Jackson. We were doing Rhythm Nation, and we had got to the end of Rhythm Nation. And, uh... And Janet came with a song. It was this a little this little bar phrase on on a cassette, you know, and uh, and but it was on a piano, you know. So Janet brought that to me, and I was like, wow, you know. And and I told her, I said, you know, your brother has like you know, beat it and Dirty Diana and all stuff. I said it'd be really cool if you know if you had like a, a hard rock anthem. So Jelly Bean turned the piano into an electric guitar, and that little bar phrase became the number one hit, Black Cat. And I told Janet, I said, you know, I want you to sound like a rock and roll queen on that. Now, I wasn't sure that she knew what the hell I was talking about. <laughs> but uh, she, it turned out she did. We kicked everybody out of flight time, her boyfriend, everybody, you know, kicked everybody out, just me and her. And, uh, you know, which is good anyway, because, you know, to get that kind of sound, you got to be really, really loud. Even now, some 40 years later, you can still hear Jelly Bean and that Minneapolis sound influencing some of music's biggest artists. If you listen to Bruno Mars, you know, <laughs> you hear that he did his homework on us. You know, he did his homework on, you know, and he'll tell you that. He said, uh, we played the Grammys with him one year, and he, he said that, you know, that, you know, he learned a lot of stuff from us. Everybody. The greasiness, the funkiness, the spank. The, 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 the grit, all of that, that that's in it was exactly what the Minneapolis sound is. And Jelly Bean's not done yet. At 64 years old, he just released a new album called Get Experience, the Jelly Bean Johnson Experience. You know, I have all these different layers to my musical, 
you know, journey and stuff. So I, that's what I try to do on this record. I put all a little bit of all of them in there, even though everybody knows like funky. Everybody knows about the hard rock guitar, hard guitar stuff. So, so we got all that in there. And I just got a fabulous group of musicians together and they were willing to give me their time uh, to do this. Back on stage at the Minnesota Music Cafe, Jelly Bean Johnson is in his element. Doesn't matter if it's for one or 100,000. He's here for the music, what it does for the soul, an unassuming music icon writing the next chapter of his legendary career. It's not just getting up there to play just because there's a paycheck at the end of the day. He loves his music and what he's done. And all the people that he's worked around have been touched by his musical career and are still being touched by it. Amy Hawker, Fox 9. You can tell all of that just comes from a love of music. No doubt. And some music just never goes out of style. No. You know, and anybody who knows anything about Minneapolis music knows Jelly Bean Johnson. Yeah. A movie should be made about him and the experiences he's had. Maybe. Yeah, I know. We'll, we'll get to work on that. <laughs>